athletes. I'm not talking or debating with you on what the supposed words or preachings of Jesus were. Uh, I'm, I'm clearly convinced that as a pastor, you, you are much more researched in those specific words. I'm not debating with that. I'm talking about the fact that you just re-emphasized my point that Matthew, John, Luke, they all are humans. Yes. Not supernatural beings. Right. Not people who died for our sins. Right. Not, you know, and yet it's their words that we're supposed to take. Yeah. Yeah. There's a fundamental conflict that, that you cannot just brush that off and say, yeah, let's move to the next subject. You, I mean, before we move on, you've got to settle that. All right, That's I That's a big conflict. Fine. Go ahead. I enjoy debating Muslims. I can promise you I would never look a Muslim in the face and say, you know, we can't get any accurate information about Muhammad because the Quran was written by people. That is really a type of historical cynicism that is scary. I was under the impression that you guys are paying a lot of money to take history courses here at this fine university. What is historical knowledge based on? It's based on homo sapiens, human beings, seeing George Washington, seeing Napoleon, and writing down what they saw. And you don't get Napoleon traipsing through a history class every September here at this fine university, fighting the Battle of Waterloo in order to prove that Napoleon fought the Battle of Waterloo. Quite to the contrary, you study documents, you study archaeology, in order to ascertain whether the European history, the Asian history, the African history, whatever history it is you're studying, is reliable or not. But I can promise you, I hope you're not insinuating that because human beings write an historical document, therefore it's false because they're human beings. I certainly don't think you would want to try and maintain that position. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, sure. Uh, I, I applaud your effort at, at trying to bring in the analogy of general history as you know, being the disproof, the disproof of what I'm trying to focus on and, and, and bring to your attention here. A, you know, let's talk about Napoleon. Let, let's use that as an example. That's a good example. The Battle of Waterloo. A, how many people were killed? How many paintings? How many you know documentarians were there documenting that? B, there is nothing nothing about the Battle of Waterloo, nothing about George Washington, nothing about any of these people in your history that are committing, that are breaking the laws of nature. If you are open to the possibility of a supernatural God, then you have to be open to the possibility of a miracle occurring. The only way a miracle cannot occur is if there is no supernatural God. Obviously, a miracle doesn't happen every day. And you're right, I don't read about people rising from the dead all over the place. But if there is a supernatural God, if you start with the philosophical presupposition of theism, then there is nothing irrational about believing that the dead Christ could rise from the dead. If you don't allow for a supernatural God to exist, then obviously the resurrection of Christ is stupidity, irrational. So obviously then the question becomes, do you embrace naturalism, which means you have a closed universe, there is no supernatural God who can intervene, or do you allow for the possibility of a supernatural God who can intervene in the natural order and perform a miracle? Second point, the Gospels are incredibly historically reliable. What year do you live in? You live in the year 2008. I'm certain you would not seriously question whether Jesus ever existed or not in light of the fact that you live in the year 2008. So, the overwhelming historical evidence is Jesus did live, and the overwhelming historical evidence is the Gospels are incredibly reliable. They repeat exactly what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 in the year 50, 51, 52 AD, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that he was raised from the dead according to the scriptures on the third day. So there is no revisionism going on. Right from the get-go, 50 days after the resurrection, on the day of Pentecost, Peter stands up and preach, you killed the Christ. God raised him from the dead. We're all eyewitnesses of this fact. 
That's 50 days after the resurrection. Less than two months. So there's not this big gap between the events of Christ and then the verbal and then the written documentation of what Jesus said, how he lived, how he died, and how he rose from the dead. You push the record, historical record back as far as you can go. You never come up against a non-supernatural Christ. You never come up against a dead Christ who didn't rise from the dead. The record is crystal clear right from its inception. He claimed to be God in human form. He was a human being. He had a flesh body, obviously. He died. He rose from the dead. Very consistent. No revisions. Uh, Roman records show us that Jesus did live, that he was arrested, that he was killed. That's all. There, just, a, just to throw in an example of a record that does exist of a non-supernatural Jesus. B, to your first point, more important point, is we've come down to the root of the issue. You just said that all of those things that I said, those are good, well and good, and they make sense, and you make a good point, but only if you don't believe in a supernatural God. So we come to the brunt of the issue, that all these po points of evidence, everything around you that's pointing and leading towards these natural laws, you said, you know, you know <laughs> that because I follow natural laws, I, I, I have a closed universe. Uh, sir, I, I apologize, but you know, I, I was an astronomy major as well, and believe me that, you know, if anything, the philosophy of there being a heaven and a hell and, and, and God being, you know, focused on earth and humans, the one and only gem of the universe, when mathematically speaking, it's guaranteed 99.999 ad infinitum that there is not only other life exactly like us out there, but that there is every other variation you could think of. Now, if you want to disregard mathematics, then we can disregard mathematics. But once again, that would mean that you just have to fundamentally believe in a supernatural God. And we get down to the point there that all of those evidences only don't make sense and only don't break your argument if you don't believe in a supernatural God. To which case, I come to the question, why, what authority do you think you have? Or does anyone think they have? Why do you believe in a supernatural God when your evidence comes from humans? B, there's no mention of dinosaurs in the Bible at all. So, you know, obviously, you kind of have to make that concession towards that at least microevolutionary model. And once you get to microevolution, you get to the point where God had to create it somewhere. Where is your evidence for that? I'm glad to know that you're an astronomy student. I would ask you to speak with your astronomy professor, Dr. Martin Gaskell, who is a deeply committed follower of Christ. He spoke out here three and a half hours ago about how there is absolutely no contradiction between his work as a scientist, as an astronomy professor here, as obviously a PhD in astronomy, and his faith in Christ. Second point, I do not believe God exists because of the Bible. I don't believe God exists because of any book. I believe that God exists because the order and design that I'm confronted around me in this world points me to an intelligent mind. Because my observation and experience, 100% in this life is, you never get order coming out of chaos by chance. Second piece of evidence for God's existence is the Big Bang clearly points to the fact that the universe is not eternal. The universe has a beginning. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. The universe has a beginning, therefore the universe has a cause. In this world full of choices, where is the truth in all the voices? Give me an answer. Don't waste my time.